Thank you. I'm very often asked myself why I am here. Not <laughs> that I regret speaking to you tonight. I'm more thinking of a broader picture. Why are we here? Where do we come from? What is our origin? You are here. This is an image taken by a NASA spacecraft from Mars, and it's an image of our Earth. But where is here? And why we are here and not somewhere else? Where did life come from? Where are we coming from? In order to answer these questions, we have to go to space. We have to investigate the objects and bodies which are around us, the moon, the planets, and the sun. And that is also the reason why space agencies, like the European Space Agency, ESA, are sending missions to space. ESA sent missions to Venus, to Mars. They even land on a comet. NASA has put humans on the moon and brought some samples back. But also other big space agencies like Russia, China, India, and Japan send space mission into space to contribute to these pictures and to answer this question. Today, I will tell you about my favorite space mission. My favorite space mission is called Bepi Colombo, and it's a mission to explore Mercury. Bepi Colombo is a joint mission between the European Space Agency, ESA, and the Japanese Space Exploration Agency, JAXA, and both agencies want to know more about Mercury. But why Mercury? I was very often asked this question when I started working on this project. Why are you going to Mercury? Look at it. It's a boring planet. Looks like the moon, nothing spectacular, only craters, no volcanoes. And there's not even believed that there's life there. So why do you want to go there? It's wasting money. I can tell you, for me, I see it totally different. I think Mercury is a very nice place to go and a very important end member, which we have to investigate. Mercury is a planet closest to the sun. And in this orbit, you found in other solar systems, extrasolar planets, which are most of them which we have found so far, are in orbits similar to what's that one of Mercury. But there's more. Mercury is the smallest planet of our solar system. It only has a diameter of 4,480 kilometers and is a little bit bigger than our moon. On the other hand, Mercury is very dense. It is the densest object in our solar system then Mercury goes very fast around the sun. It orbits the sun in 88 days, much faster than the Earth. A day on Mercury is 58 days, but a year is 88 days. So you have three days in two years. So all in all, I think Mercury is very fascinating, and I can tell you it's also a planet of mysteries. And it all started out in the 70s when NASA sent its first flyby mission called Mariner 10 to Mercury. At that time, instruments on, messenger, uh, on Mariner 10 discovered that there is a magnetic field like what we have on Earth, a dynamo field, 100 times weaker, but nevertheless the same. At that time, it was totally unexpected. Nobody believed from the formation models we have, that that is possible. So at that time, that forced us to rethink our formation models. This result was then later confirmed by another NASA mission, which went in orbit around Mercury, because there were still some scientists who believed that that could not be right, the measurement of the magnetic field. 
but Messenger confirmed that there is a magnetic field around Mercury. But if you compare to Earth, the magnetic field around Mercury is not centered in the middle of the planet. It seemed to be shifted by 400 kilometers, which is 20% of the radius, which is quite a lot. There's another mystery, and it's related to the formation temperature. We cannot measure directly the formation temperature of Mercury, but what we can measure is the ratio of potassium and thorium at the surface. And that is an indication of the formation temperature. If that value is low, the formation temperature is high, which you would expect for a planet so close to the sun. But what we measured is that the Mercury has more, the value is more the one of Mars. How can that be? What does it mean? Does it mean that Mercury is maybe not formed at the place where it is right now? Could be. I mentioned in the beginning that Mercury has a very high density. And one idea for this high density was that Mercury encountered a big impact in the past, which stripped away the lighter material and only left the planet as it is today. So this impact could maybe also have shifted Mercury from another place to a place where it is right now. We don't know. Mercury, as I said, is a planet closest to the sun. And on Mercury, we have therefore very high temperatures. Surface temperatures at Mercury at maximum are 450 degrees. 450 degrees that are temperatures you find on Earth in a pizza oven. <laughs> but in addition, people or scientists or messenger found that there is water ice on Mercury. How can that be? Think about it. Water ice in a pizza oven? Impossible. But it's not. Mercury, unlike Earth, is not tilted. Earth is tilted and therefore you have the seasons, but Mercury's rotation axis is perpendicular to the orbital plane. And for that reason, you have some areas on Mercury where the sun never shines into. There are some craters indicated as the yellow dots. And in these craters, the scientists found water ice. And this water ice can be stable there over millions of years. The question is still, how does the water came to Mercury and why the water is there? But that is another thing. We have another nice feature. You probably have never seen it because also scientists at the time saw it for the first time. There are structures on Mercury which you don't find on any other planet. They call it hollows. And these are the bright features in the shallow depressions and there are, because they are bright, indicate that this material must be fresh and young. We believe that it uh, remains from outgassing from subsurface layers. So on a dead planet, I told you in the beginning, people said it was boring to go to Mercury. Recent activity, maybe and still today. It's fascinating. I con can't continue to <laughs> tell you all the surprises and mysteries about Mercury. But I will stop here because I want to tell you more about my favorite mission, Bepi Colombo, and what we will do to follow up these results and maybe shed some light to these mysteries and give some solution for it. Bepi Colombo is a space mission with constraints of two spacecraft. I told you it's a joint mission. And therefore, we have one spacecraft provided by the Japanese agency. That's the smaller one on the top. It's called MIO. It's a Mercury magnetospheric orbiter. And this orbiter is more, the goals are to investigate the environment around Mercury, the magnetosphere, and how the particles around Mercury interact with the solar wind. Then we have a second orbiter provided by ESA, and this orbiter will more study and investigate with this instrument the planet itself, the surface, the composition of the surface, the structure, the roughness. And we can even look inside to get 
some information on the inner composition, on the core and the mantle, and so on. In order to bring these two spacecraft to Mercury, we had to introduce a third spacecraft, which called a Mercury uh, Transfer Orbiter, which is a thing in the back with the big solar panels. And this is, uh, will provide us uh, the energy we needed to do orbit correction and then bring uh, the spacecraft to Mercury. And this is a solar electric propulsion engine which we use there, meaning that we propel ions and the push of many ions which are leaving the spacecraft will give us the correct speed to go to Mercury. Since the Japanese spacecraft is a spinning spacecraft and during the cruise uh, to Mercury, we need to stack them together. We also had to protect them with the sun shield. And here you see how the spacecraft looks like during its cruise to Mercury. I think, of course, I'm working on it. It's a very nice spacecraft. And <laughs> unfortunately, when we reach Mercury, <clears throat> the lower part is not needed anymore. Then we only need the two orbiters around Mercury. So it will be jettisoned and we get rid of it shortly before we enter into orbit. I mentioned this so like, oh, sorry. I mentioned the solar electric propulsion and one of the enabling technology. But on Bepi Colombo, since it's so close to the sun, it's uh, so hot around Mercury, we had to develop almost 80% uh, of the technologies we are used to have to either be newly developed or adapt to the environment there. And I brought you one piece <coughs> which we also developed specially uh, for this mission. <coughs> it's a multi-layer insulation blanket. And this blanket is needed that we keep the temperatures inside our spacecraft very cozy to operate our instrument. So inside the spacecraft, we have 20 degrees, while outside the spacecraft temperatures are much higher. And this uh, fabric, um, uh, multi-layer insulation blanket is made of a fabric like you have on Earth on fireman's clothes, is sewed by hand when it was put it on, on the spacecraft. And in addition, it has many aluminum layers. When it is around the spacecraft, it's about six centimeters thick. And uh, that was a special development for this mission. I will pass it around so that you can have a closer look but it's uh, covered for a reason. Please do not open it because there are some brittle materials inside which are a little dangerous if you inhale it. <laughs> <laughs> Our mission was launched already five years ago in October 2018 from our uh, spaceport in French Guyana, Kourou. That is where we launch our ESA missions from. And it's now on the way to Mercury. Our journey to Mercury will take seven years, which is unfortunately quite long. On the other hand, Mercury is very close by, only 50 million kilometers away. <coughs> but with our spacecraft, in order to go to Mercury, we are going 9 billion kilometers, 20 times more. Now you asked, why is that the case? Are your space engineers not able to read a space map? No, the contrary is the case. They are very clever guys because our spacecraft is quite heavy. It weighs four tons. And in order to bring four tons to Mercury, you would need a lot of fuel and you need much bigger rockets than we have today. So the idea is instead of taking the fuel with us, we are using the help of the planets around us. So we are doing slingshot maneuvers around Venus, around the Earth, and several times around Mercury. And with this slingshot maneuvers, we will get the needed energy uh, to go to Mercury. Unfortunately, the planets are not aligned. And for that reason, we have to go 18 times around the sun before we reach Mercury on a way that we could fall into the gravity field. And that's the reason why it takes so long and why we have to 
travel 9 billion kilometers. The two spacecraft of Bepi Colombo in total have 16 instruments and they cover almost everything you can think of to do a very thorough exploration of Mercury. Our science goals, I said, is to investigate the surface of the planet, what, what is the composition of the planet, because with the minerals on the surface, we can get information on the formation and how the planet was formed. We can look with some of the instruments on the inner structure, how the planet is formed. Then we have instruments uh, to study the magnetic field and to see how the dynamo is acting and how this magnetic field is interacting uh, with the sun. Last but not least, we also have, uh, because Mercury is very fast, we can use our spacecraft to study general relativity. So we can measure relativic, relativistic effects around Mercury and we have instrumentation on the spacecraft which is sensitive enough to get all the information we need to confirm this theory. I'm almost at the end of my talk and I told you that our spacecraft is uh, stacked together and because of that, some of our instruments are looking to the transfer module. We thought it was a very clever idea because then we don't need special protection because they are protected by the transfer module during the cruise. But unfortunately, that would meant that we cannot operate our laser and that we cannot operate our science cameras doing the flybys and then take some nice pictures. Also, some of the instruments inside the sun shield of the Japanese spacecraft cannot be operated. Nevertheless, some of the instruments have been operated already, and we got some nice results, which are also published. But I said we have no cameras, but that's not completely true. We have monitoring cameras on the transfer module, and these cameras were there to see if our solar panels were correctly deployed or the antenna. And with these cameras, we took this wonderful picture from Mercury during our third flyby. And you see a part of the spacecraft, the high gain antenna on this image, but also Mercury. And uh, it is a very nice picture for outreach, but also for us that we know we are getting there and we are coming closer. I hope I could convince you that Bepi Colombo is a fascinating space mission, that we need to go to space to get answers on the very important question of our existence, of our origin, that Mercury is a planet to study, that we need to go to Mercury in order to get a proper answer on all of these questions. And I would leave you with one of my thoughts that I had when I prepared this talk. I think in order to get answers to some question or to solve mysteries, sometimes you need to make a step and you bridge space or go into space to have a more closer look and to uh, get then uh, or being enabled to solve the mysteries. And I wish you be open and take the space around you. Thank you very much.